Hello and welcome to the Junket tutorial for how to create your own experiences. I'm going to walk you through what you need to do to set up your experience or your Junket uh, to be available to uh, your visitors on the mobile application. So uh, first things first, uh, you need to sign up. You need to sign up uh, and create an account. Once you create an account, uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create your own uh, junket first. So all this information here, these are all the junkets that I have in my account. I can click on any of them and access them anytime. Um, but you're not going to see any of this. You're going to want to create it from scratch. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to create on uh, add a junket. So it's really the first step to go. Now once you have your junkets created, uh, you can click on the URL link which will give you access to um, sharing your experience on your website uh, if you want uh, and also you can view analytics information by clicking that that will show you how many downloads you have um, how many stops have been visited which stops are the most popular um, when people are using this and what kind of devices that they're using uh, so to get started we're just going to go ahead and click on add a junket and this is the first thing you'll see you want to put in the title so put in the title of your junket and you're going to want to set the pricing. So we have two options. There's the free model and the premium model. Um, so if it's free, then anybody that sees the junket will be able to access it at any time. There is uh, no exchange uh, required. Uh, for premium, you'll be able to set the price of the junket and you can charge whatever you want to charge for your junket. Um, and uh, we have more on that in our FAQ. Uh, but you can, uh, you can actually sell your junkets and um, and get some proceeds from that. Uh, now we have the junket type. So we've got three different types of junkets. We've got uh, outdoor, indoor, and adventure. So the first is indoor. That's mainly for locations like museums uh, and places that are not outside, places that do not use GPS coordinates. Um, and that's very simple. Uh, we do, it doesn't use a map interface, which you'll see later. Um, it's just very basic and you have a list of locations. Um, so it looks more like um, it looks more like this stop list. So this is what you'll see in the indoor tour. Um, you can click and drag your locations and points of interest around as you like, um, and you'll create it on this type of dashboard. Now, the difference between the indoor and the outdoor is that the outdoor uh, looks more like this with a map. And you can create routes, you can edit routes, you can move your points around um, on basically a, a map interface. Indoor location doesn't have that. Um, so, um, so you're gonna to wanna to select which type of junket. Now the adventure junket is the newest feature that we have. The adventure junket is uh, a little bit more complicated than the outdoor uh, feature. What that does is um, you have a definitive start point and a definitive ending point. And your start point starts with ending, you end the stop information with giving the user an option of three choices. So they get to take two to three, cho two to four choices. It's basically a multiple choice selection and each different choice they make brings them to a different spot on the map. Maps can overlap. Um, it's a way of making the experience uh, a little bit more interactive and it requires the decision making from the user and each decision will take them to a different spot. So that takes a little bit more thought uh, and, and a little bit more planned out to create those. Um, but that is the best experience that, um, that the users can receive um, because it, uh, it forces them to make decisions and, be, and participate in the activity. Whereas opposed to a two-dimensional uh, two tour, you just you go from point A to point B, it's, it's, it's very basic. The adventure um, has people making decisions and the choices, the decisions that they make determine where they go next. So uh, for this, we're gonna focus on the outdoor um, and then we're gonna, uh, and then you will press create junket. Um, now I haven't um, titled my junket just yet, but once this populates, what we'll see uh, is uh, you'll basically see this. So this is what you'll have to fill out first. So you will want to create a feature image. You'll want to, uh, and that's what this image is for. Um, this little plus sign here in the center, this is the map icon. So if you want to create a map icon on the map that appears on the map in, in the app, let's say I'm doing the, the ghost in New York City and I want a, uh, a little ghost symbol or ghost icon. I'll press the plus sign, go to the icon, 
Okay, there we go. Now it worked. Um, now I'm going to press save. All right, looks like that worked. Great. Before any junket is allowed on the platform, you have to submit it. Um, and it has to meet certain quality guidelines. Uh, not anybody can put anything they want and have it appear on the app. Um, it has to have uh, quality images that are e easily seen. They can't be blurry. They, they, they have to be appropriate images. Uh, there has to be text in each of your stops. There's, there's got to be audio files. Um, and there's got to be uh, some content uh, associated with that. Um, and that is for quality assurance. Uh, nobody wants to put out an experience that isn't quality, um, and so that's why we have this. So um, here you have the, the title. Um, you can always edit this at any time. Just because you submit something um, doesn't mean you can't change it in the future. The great thing about this platform is that you can always come back in, edit it, and resubmit, uh, resubmit the change. Now this tells me the status is live and appearing on the app. So when you first start, it will not be live. Once it is published, it will be visible. Um, if I wanted to unpublish it and make it not visible for whatever reason, I could just click on publish and it would no longer become live. So here, this is our, our, our main description for setting up the junket. This is the first thing that you want to do. You want to complete the description. You want to let people know why they should go and take your junket. What are they going to do? What are they going to see? What are they going to learn? Where are they going to go? Um, this is, these are the kind of things that you want to answer in the description. Think of this as sort of a, a preview or a movie trailer before they actually go and, and, and take this experience. So this is where you get to communicate with them what they're in for, what they're going to do. Um, and then we have the pricing here. So uh, this is, again, where you can set the pricing. Um, and then um, what you'll have below that, if it is uh, something that has a cost associated with it, you'll want to add the uh, amount that you'll want to charge um, for the junket. So we recommend anywhere between 5 and $10. Um, so um, the way the currency purchases work is it's done through tokens and you get paid as a percentage of those tokens that are used to exchange for your junket. Um, so generally, I think charging under five is way too low, um, and then anything over 10 can be a little bit questionable, but the great thing about this platform is that you get to just choose what you wanna charge for your experience. Again, this is the junket type. Uh, this is the location, so we decided to make the lo starting location. Uh, this address here in New York City. Now, this is important because the starting location determines where your junket appears on the user screen. So um, when somebody downloads the app, the first thing they see are the junkets that are closest to their current physical location. And it uses this address to know which to display, what to, what to display uh, for them. So, um, so by putting this address here, uh, uh, and if I'm if I'm a user and um, and I'm in New York City, I'm going to want to know which is closest to me, and that's why this location uh, is uh, entry is is important. Now you can put your your social media links, you can put your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your Twitter page as well. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want people to start sharing their tour experience uh, on social media. Um, and following you on social media, then it's a, a nice thing to place these there. Um, this is the audio. This is the introduction audio. This is the um, so when you start the junket, not only can somebody see um, what the description is and th they want to know whether or not they want to take it, uh, this audio intro also gives them um, a chance to listen to what they will be experiencing. And so they will listen to this uh, audio file. And the public transportation system. However, it's all... And it's another way that they can experience this. Now, the background audio is a nice touch. Let's say you want to give the ju your junket some kind of ambient, some kind of um, background sound. Even if they're not in a stop, this music can play as they're walking from point A to point B. Um, and that can really help set the mood. So this is a haunted theme tour. The background audio is great because it has sort of a spooky music, spooky vibe to it. Um, and that really helps set the mood for the junket. Um, and it's, so it's people are, are not just, um, when they're in the experience, it's not just about the stops, but it's about in between the stops. Uh, what are they doing? What are they listening to between those stops? And uh, so for a haunted themed activity, 
it makes sense to have uh, the haunted background audio to kind of reinforce that uh, that theme. Then we have the media, so we can upload different images. So this is the main image of the junket. This is the this main image up here is the first thing that people see when they're scrolling through the list of activities near them. So you're going to want something that represents you well. Uh, but you can add multiple images if you want. You certainly don't have to. You do have to add a main image. Um, and you do have to add a description and you do have to add an intro audio. Um, it's up to you if you want to add different images. Uh, and then there's a YouTube video URL. So if you want to do a, uh, a video intro, people could watch a video. Maybe you want to welcome them personally. Um, you can do that. Take a video, upload it to YouTube, and then copy the YouTube video link here where it says YouTube video URL. And you're all set. Um, so next we've got... Um, and what it does is it overlays a video on your main image and people will see that they have a video that they can watch uh, and they can then watch uh, that video. Now the trophy is for um, for people who actually complete 80% uh, or more of your activity um, in person. So uh, for trophies and points, that's something that is reserved for users who are actually physically at that location. Um, they don't earn points if they're not there. So um, while your activity can be available to anybody anywhere, only people that are actually there taking this can earn points and earn trophies. And I think that makes sense. Um, so uh, if you wanted to upload a custom trophy image and you wanted an image to overlay behind the trophy, um, that could be your logo, that could be something else, you could upload a custom image for that trophy. Now, if somebody earns a trophy, you could also decide to offer them a prize. Now, this prize could be anything. It could be a coupon code it, uh, towards a certain percentage off um, on your website. Uh, it could instruct them to go to a local coffee shop or a physical location to redeem their prize. You could give away a t-shirt. You could give away a number of different things. Whatever you want, if you want to offer a prize, you can offer a prize. If you do want to offer a prize, click on Offer Prize, and then you're going to in, add your prize details. Congratulations, you have won a t-shirt. Go to this location to redeem it. Um, so you put your details in here. Congratulations, thanks for completing this, this quest. Um, and then the time limit. Now the time limit, and this, these tool tips help. Now this is how long they have to redeem this prize. So you want people to, ideally, as soon as they complete the junket, to go and redeem that prize sooner rather than later. And so this time limit lets them know that the prize will expire. So if they get a prize, um, they need to redeem it quickly. Um, when the time runs out, and again, you can set the time limit in number of hours here. If the time runs out, uh, then they won't see the prize details and the prize location and the redemption instructions. So here you can put the prize location. You can either add an address uh, or you can just, you can put a website. Um, and with the prize instructions, you can again tell them how they are going to redeem their prize. Um, they can go to a website, they can use a promotion code, uh, they can do whatever you want. Um, so once you're done setting this information up, this is the main information that you need before you start building out your junket, press save. Now once you press save, what you'll see is uh, you'll see the map here. So um, you'll want to go to wherever your junket uh, is based and you're going to want to start plotting points. So to do to start plotting points, uh, what you're going to want to do is click on Add Point. And when you add a point, you can click on the map wherever you want to add. Let's say I'm going to want to add a point uh, at the Flatiron Building. So I just press the Flatiron Building. And then, uh, and then you're going to build out the information for that stop. Before you create a location, uh, this right here is what you're going to see. You're going to want to add a feature image, add the title, add the description, add the location. Now you can either enter an address or you can use the map and select the location on the map. Uh, and then when you select the location on the map, it will populate that location. You want to set a trigger radius. Now what a trigger radius does is it tells you how long the, how far away the person has to be from that particular address or location before that stop will begin playing. Now the great thing about Junket is it's hands-free. Um, person doesn't have to hold out their phone the entire time, but of course they can. But if they want to just walk down a street or a pathway, the stops will automatically start when they reach the geofence. So the radius 
is what determines how far away the person, the user has to be from your spot before that will start playing. If you're going to a building that um, has a large wall or fence around it, um, you obviously want to set it so that the trigger radius is outside those bounds. That way it works and it triggers. If somebody is listening to one stop and um, they decide maybe they're not interested and they want to listen to the next stop, they can just continue to walk down the street. And as soon as they come to the trigger radius of the next stop, the previous stop that was playing will cease and the new stop will start playing. Um, this is the, uh, and then we have the audio file and that's what it's going to play automatically. So you wanna upload your audio file. Now one of the things we're gonna be adding is the ability to record your audio file directly here in the platform by placing a record button and a save button. Um, and then that way you don't have to actually upload files. Uh, currently you'll have to um, upload your audio files. So you need to make your audio files before and then upload them here. Uh, media, again, this is the images. So you have your main feature image. This is the first image, image that appears. And then you have your additional images, which you may or may not add. And then you have a YouTube video link as well. So uh, one of the things that you want to do is just paste your YouTube uh, link in here. And then as soon as you do, you'll see the video appear in this box here. And then you want to press save. And once you press save, that saves your spot. Now I'm not going to save this since this is a demonstration. So instead I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to show you what a completed stop looks like. So um, let's go ahead and um, click on our junket here. So I can see the list mode. I can toggle between list mode and map mode. So you might decide that you're looking for a specific place by name in which case the list mode would help uh, and you can quickly go to where you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, click on the Palace Theater here. And this is what a complete stop looks like. You don't have to put the address in the description. Um, and so I have our, our main feature image. We have our title, our written description. We've got the location here the trigger radius, the audio, which you can listen to after you uploaded it. You can always Palace listen to it. Theater. The I can upload more media if I want, the YouTube option, but that's really all you need. The audio, location, the written description, the title, and the feature image. So I'm gonna go back um, and, um, and I can always edit any location that I want. It's very easy to use. Now let's go back to the map mode and this is our stop list. I can also rearrange the stops here uh, in the order of the stops. So I can click and drag these numbers around and once I click save, they will edit. Um, so if I want decoder to be stop number two, then it will be stop number two. You can move it back and forth. Just need to make sure that, um, that you save your progress and go back when you're ready. Now what this does is inside the app, somebody can look, the user can look at a list of stops and locations that they can scroll down. Ordering these corresponds to the order in the app that the user can scroll through. So let's go back to map mode. And once we're in map mode, here we can see the points of interest that we have created. Now the neat thing about this is that we want to know how we can create a route. So right now this is just a bunch of locations plotted on a map. Well, we can actually create a route. So here's what the route looks like. You see this blue line is the route and this tells people where they should walk. Now this is something that you're gonna design um, after you plot your points. The next thing you're going to want to do is uh, draw a route between them so that people can follow a path. Talk about how to create the route and uh, to do that I pulled up a map of a tour in Los Angeles, a uh, Hollywood tour, uh, and here you see the different points of interest with the radius around them. Now this is your trigger radius, so this shows you uh, how far the person has to be for that stop to start playing the audio. Now, um, 
If I want to see the route that's already on the map, I'll just press show route. And if I press uh, show route here, I can see the route line. Um, now, if you're starting out with your junker for the first time, you're not going to have a route line, so you're going to want to draw a route. So to do that, what you'll do is you'll press draw a route. Now, once you press draw a route, you're simply going to press on the map where you want to start your route. So let's say I want to start here at the Johnny Grant building. I will press here and I will press along where I want everybody to go. Maybe I want them to cross the street, walk along. You can adjust it as you want. And you just keep clicking where you want the route to go. So it's very straightforward. And if you want to adjust the line, what you want to do is you want to click on any of these circles, points along the line, and uh, you can click it and just move it wherever you'd like. Um, and then once you're done with that, you're going to click Save Route at the bottom. Um, so you're going to go ahead and click this button right here, and that will save your route. If you don't like it for whatever reason and you want to delete it, just press the red Cancel button and it will remove the route that you just drew. Now you can only have one route per junket, so you can't create multiple routes. You have to pick one. Um, and you see, even though I drew a route, it didn't delete the old route that I had. Um, so you still see the one that I created here. Um, now that's how you create the route to round out your junket. And, um, and this also shows the button that you have to press to submit your junket for approval. So if your junket is not live, you'll see this bottom at the very bottom, submit for approval. Once you submit that, then we will uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, and if we approve it, then it will go live and you'll see the status as live. Um, and you can always unpublish uh, your junket at any time as well by pressing the unpublish button. That completes the creation of a junket. If you have any questions, please let us know. And we hope you enjoy the platform. Thank you very much.